my subscribers give me the best ideas for videos. And today it's going to be all about getting feedback. So hold on, this may be a bit of a bumpy ride because, well, there's some stuff we need to talk about and it's not all cut and dry. Hi, I'm Autumn Bardot. Welcome back to my channel. Here you will find writing tips, author tools, and hopefully even inspiration for living your best writing life. I think I have to say subscribe. Subscribe! Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'd love if you would leave me a comment because I think this topic definitely, you should have some comments because everybody has their own experiences here and it's really good to share the whole feedback quandary, I guess you would call it. Okay, so let's dive in. So a subscriber messaged me with a question um, about how do I weigh feedback on a book? So she wanted to know specifically about her book. How do I weigh the feedback? How, she said, how do I know if the advice is good? Um, is it just me resisting to make it better like I'm dug in I don't want to make it better I think it's fine the way it is or did the reader just not the reader critiquer just not get the book and these are really really great questions and um there is no short answer and I told her you know what these are great questions and I'm going to do a video on this so if you have questions you know drop me a comment in um Instagram, I think she DM'd me or leave a comment here because sometimes, I mean, I want to help you address all those things that come up with writing. Okay, so if you've been in the writing community for any length of time, you know that everyone, everyone is really happy to give advice. Look at the plethora of writing Facebook groups. I mean, I have one. There's so many out there and they will all be happy to give you advice. But, and ah, giant sigh, it's often not the right advice. It's not accurate advice. It's only partial advice or because it's just, it's not in your genre. It's not in your genre. And so that matters. I'm not going to take advice about even something like advertising from a romance group because that's a different reader, um, you know, that the standard romance than say historical fiction, which is one of the genres I write. So I have a list of questions or things to ask yourself when you get the advice or the feedback back from someone. So the first thing you want to think about is, is the person giving the feedback or the advice an experienced expert writer? An experienced expert writer. Are they traditionally published? This will tell you that their writing is up to snuff and, and your writing can be up to snuff and you can be indie. I totally get that. But you know if it's traditionally published that the writing is up to snuff and meets industry standards. Okay, so I'm putting that out there. So that also means that they would understand the genres conventions, their particular genres conventions, and be able to deliver a compelling story. Too often folks are too eager to give advice and they're really just amateurs or beginners and maybe they're just really compelling and they just sound the advice sounds really great uh, and they sound really convincing but they just don't have enough knowledge I guess you could say and I'm going to give you an example here so it's like a person with a, a big interest in architecture telling you how to design your house without a basic understanding and of the basic without an understanding both of the basic and sophisticated elements of great architecture we all have people like oh you should do this but that's not gonna go with you know they would have to know um you know 
the, the elements of architecture and how they work together along with all of the other things that they need to go, like all the, you know, inside the wall stuff that is required of architecture. Here's another example. Um, we had several pool companies give us bids and designs for our very awkwardly shaped, very awkwardly shaped backyard. And we got a couple guys in here and uh, most of them gave us, two of them gave us cookie cutter designs and they didn't get the aesthetic and the vibe I was going for and they didn't give us something that worked with the very odd space that we had, a very odd space, kind of long with a kind of pointy thing, very odd space. Only one, only one guy in, with one pool company was able to maximize the really odd space and also pointed out things that we could and could not do with this space. And he gave real, like great creative and logical creative and logical suggestions and he worked within the limits of the space and our needs and understood immediately the aesthetic and vibe that we were going for. He obviously had much more skill and experience than the other guys who came out. He cost more, <laughs> right? But he turned a really awkwardly shaped backyard into just a, a beautiful living and entertaining um, space. So he, he got it and was able to deliver because of his experience and knowledge. Um, so the next thing you that, that would be, are they an exper expert, experienced writer? The next question you want to ask yourself is, does the person write in your genre? Now, there are some definite caveats to this, some definite exceptions. So most writers, good writers, will, can give you basic advice on character issues, character development issues, plotting issues, plotting, conflict, dialogue issues, description issues. They can identify if the grammar is a, is a hot mess or if you're flipping back from present to past tense. Um, they can see if you've got too much perfect tense going on. They can see if you have too much backstory or side story or you get, you veer away or if there's too much um, showing too much telling, too much telling versus showing. So a uh, right, most good writers will be able to, to tell you that. Okay. They can tell you all of those things. So I could read sci-fi, right? Which I have read sci-fi and I can look at it analytically and say, Hey, do you really need two pages to describe this weapon? Is that a genre convention? Or is that just you being like giving far too much information or can we drop this information in throughout the text? Okay, and I don't write sci-fi, okay? Um, I can say things like, can you tighten this paragraph? Those kinds of things. This character doesn't have an arc where they don't have any weaknesses or this is a trope, any of those things. An experienced writer, and I know new writers don't like to hear this, and they say, how is this possible? But trust me, it's possible. Uh, can usually tell your skill level in a few sentences. Yes, in a few sentences. I can open up somebody's manuscript and tell your skill level if you have a, a command of the language, um, if you understand basic novel telling kinds of things um, just from the f beginning. It's, you know, it's what they can, what we can do. All right, number three is do they get your story? Do they get your story? So maybe you're like, ah, oh, maybe they just don't get my story. And so that's why they're giving me all these, all this feedback and this advice. Here's the thing, sometimes it matters <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't matter. Um, here's an example of when it does not matter. An example of when it does not matter. <clears throat> I had a notable uh, author, Amazon, but like bestseller, whatever, uh, critique the Emperor's Assassin. It was a paid for critique. And she, she came back with a 10 page summary. Her suggestions were all on point. She did not write historical fiction, but she understood because she was an experienced uh, novelist, um, you know, the nuances of writing and story craft. So she gave me 10 pages of 
things to look at and to revise or rework or issues maybe that I had with certain things that I was doing. Okay. Um, however, for her, as she was, you know, doing the 10 page critique, she really thought the main thrust of the story, The Emperor's Assassin, was about friendship. And it was a story about friendship. But to me, that was only a part of the story. For me, it was friendship and also it would it was about a woman's fall into a horrible life and the sacrifice of self. Um, um, Did it matter that she made it all about friendship? No, it didn't matter because her suggestions were on point about all the other things and those were the, the suggestions didn't weren't really relevant to the friendship aspect of the novel. But here's when it did matter that the person didn't get it. And I'll tell you what I, what I did. So my agent, my old agent, my ex-agent, <laughs> shot for the Impaler's wife um, to the publishers. Uh, she came back later on and she said to take out the Vlad part. Now, it is two, it is two POVs, first person and third person POV. And all the chapters link up at the end in a way that makes sense. And you have this aha moment or I want you to have this aha moment and everything kind of gels and you understand now what the main character also understands about her husband. To me, it was a critical, critical part. She wanted me to take out the Vlad part, which is really tell the story of how Vlad the Impaler, Vlad Dracula grew up and why he became what he became and his life and, and the man, like who he is, the man, okay? She, by taking out the Vlad part, it would have made it historical romance. And I would have had to change the ending, like a whole chapter of the ending. It didn't go with thematically what I was trying to do, the ending that I needed it to do, the ending that went with the beginning. <laughs> Okay, when those two parts go together, you understand the events and actions kind of as a whole. Okay, so they all, the, the two POVs link together. My agent, younger than me, obviously did not get it. I don't know, maybe she just didn't see that part. And I'm thinking, man, did she shop this as historical romance? Because it, it's not. That's only a small portion of it and actually if you look at the Kirkus review it's you know they make it about her and, and something else too so his, you know Dracula's wife so I'm thinking no it's it's gothic historical fiction which is can have romance in it and normally does have romance in it I hope she was shopping it that way did it have plenty of romance yes so my agent clearly did not get the story so that's when we parted ways because she wasn't getting it and essentially changing what I was trying to to do to show to reflect in the story itself. Here's another example. Um, I had a non-writing friend who knows literature very well and had read a draft of The Impaler's Wife and wanted there to be more interactions with um, Vlad and his two sons. Why? <laughs> I couldn't figure out why. I mean, there are some. She said, well, she is little kid at the same age and she just wanted more of it. She thought it would be cool. Did I add it? No, because it wasn't helping the plot move along. I did what I needed to do with those, with those, um, with the parts where he's interacting with his children. Okay. So it was just something she wanted at a certain stage of her life. A acquiring editor read The Impaler's Wife and wanted more chapters with Alana and Vlad's issues and problems. Did I make that change? Yes. Took six months to change it. Why did I change it? It ended up making the story much better. The same acquiring editor also wanted me to cut it by 20,000 words. I think it started at like 125,000, I think it was. Did I do it? Yes, <laughs> it made the story tighter. Did she end up picking up the Impaler's wife? No. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But I ended up with a tighter story that was uh, still a thick read, but not an overwhelming, not overwhelming in word count. I had another friend, um, a writer friend, a very um, experienced, 
experienced romance writing friend who has written lots of books, lots of romance books and, and movie scripts and she wanted to read a draft and she said she didn't like it because she thought it was, she wanted it to be more like a political power couple kind of book because I think at the time, I think House of Cards was big on Netflix and that's kind of what stuck in her mind and that's what she wanted to see, like a House of Cards with Alona and Vlad. And that's not the book I was going to write either. So, um, and that would have changed the whole vibe of the book, what I would have written in the book and it's like everything about the, <laughs> about the book. Okay, so that's, things I did change and things that I didn't change. I had another acquiring editor that asked me to remove the scary parts <laughs> because their publishing imprint didn't have those kinds of scenes and it gave her really bad dreams. Oh well, good. <laughs> um, I didn't change that either because I it's gothic. It should be it should be creepy. It should be a little bit horrifying. So that imprint obviously wasn't right and I didn't change it for it. So I gave you lots of examples there of um, just like one book. <laughs> okay, so number four. How do I know if the person is right about the problem, the advisor, the critiquer is right about the problem, or if I'm just being too stubborn or prideful to change it? That is an amazing question and a very um, reflective question because a lot of people don't ask that of themselves. So, and that's the thing really, uh, how do you know? <laughs> well, here's the thing, grammar edits are easy to fix and you should. So if they have, it says they have grammar issues, then you need to find out what those grammar issues are. Sometimes they're huge, sometimes they're minor, sometimes you really just don't know basic grammar rules. Um, but these are all very fixable. But sometimes it can be things about, you know, the conflicts going on, the emotions, the descriptions are too long or too short, the dialogue is, is, is not right. There's too much telling versus showing. So telling what's going on instead of the showing what's going on, pacing, any of those things. The hard truth is that it takes a lot of work and a lot of time to fix a lot of those issues if a um, if a writer friend an experienced writer friend tells you those things and it can be disheartening and it can take months to fix most of my rewrites have taken months not a week not a few days a rewrite takes months if you're like a normal person and do other things besides just rewrite your book most people don't want to hear that but that's been my experience and the experience of um professional authors. <laughs> so so an example, and I think why the rewrite gets hard but will get easier as you get better at it, is especially with the show versus tell kind of thing, okay? So I'm going to give you an example of the show versus tell or the tell versus show. So here's a telling statement and as you learn to do these it gets easier to write them. So just that's kind of good news, right? So here's a telling. She rode through the thick fog and it made her frightened or another telling one, the thick fog, the, the thick fog frightened her. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Okay, so that is telling. So here would be the showing changing of that sentence. The fog wrapped around her like a blanket of nettles, prickling her skin as she imagined all the horrors hiding in its cold grip. That's showing. Now, the more you learn to take those sentences and tweak them, the easier it becomes. Also, sometimes writers think they have a plot and maybe it's an assemblage of a plot, kind of, sort of, a plot, but it's just not enough. Perhaps the stakes don't increase with the rising actions. Maybe the character's actions seem to be all over the place. Maybe there's too much of this and not enough of that. So many things, right? So you can see there are no definitive answers to, is it me? Is it me not wanting to revise or are they right? Ultimately, it's your story and you have to be honest with yourself. I know writers who follow bad advice from well-meaning experts. 
I know first-time writers who never published a book who give advice, <laughs> always well-intentioned, but usually just just useless or just plain wrong or they haven't published a book yet so why are you giving this advice I, I don't know and I know writers who don't sell any books who are also giving advice on things and you have to think like hmm so you know vet the person vet vet and find out a little bit about them before you take um, all that advice okay a great experience development <laughs> A great experienced developmental editor will usually give you great advice. A professional writer will give you great advice, although there are exceptions. Case in point, when I was in the MFA program, um, my advisor, who was trad published, well known, I think he wrote movie scripts and, and two, um, that he told me that um, after reading a sample of a chapter that he didn't like a POV. Book had two POVs. He didn't like one of the POVs and of the Impaler's Wife and that I had to fix it. And I said, oh, okay, great. Oh, well, not really great, but what's wrong with it? What don't you like about it? What exactly don't you like about it? I, I really, I really, really wanted to know. And his response was, I don't know. Wow, that was so not helpful. And he said that, and I'm thinking, you know, when my students give me something to look at, whether it's a college essay for college admittance or whatever, whatever, it doesn't, it's not working, I tell them exactly why it's not working. Exactly. So this person was unhelpful and they were, you know, a professional author. So after dissecting the POV <laughs> for a couple of weeks, I de finally decided that the um, advisor had really only read one chapter um, of that particular POV and really had no idea how it acted as a whole in the story or what the twist was. So, and that's one of the reasons I left my MFA program because I went there for help and didn't get any. But, you know, hopefully your experiences are different in an MFA program. So, bottom line, there are a lot of variables. And ultimately, you want to shake off your ego and figure out if the advice is worthy. And that it's not simply you wanting to deal with the fact that their advice or criticism or suggestion will take months of laborious <laughs> rewrites because that is daunting and upsetting and you may even cry a little or get angry. But if you feel like that's what you need to do, then just, you know, kick that your ego to the, to the curb and um, do that rewrite and make your book better. Make your book better. Okay. So I hope this helps these examples, my personal examples help you understand a little bit more when you get that feedback, what you can do or how you need to look at it. If you have your own examples, I would love if you would comment, let me know how, if you listen to somebody, if you didn't listen to somebody, if you wish you had listened to somebody, if you wish you had, or if you think you just might be too stubborn and actually those people won't comment because they won't be, oh, I'm too stubborn. I think it's great the way it is. And you know, I guess that's fine too, right? I'm just, you wanna live your best writing life. So until next time, dream, create, and embrace. Unless you need to revise that manuscript, then don't embrace, let go of the embrace, give that manuscript up, and then embrace the rewrite. Cause you know what? That's kind of fun, I think. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.